the shooting range. In this episode, pages of history, Australian tanks, squad mates, the ski resort, and metal beasts, Italian light attack aircraft. Our winter batch of new vehicles brought one interesting machine that might have gotten lost among all the legendary fighter aircraft. Still, this small attacker is worth giving it some time. We believe missing it would be an oversight. Please welcome an Italian-Brazilian joint development, a light tactical attack aircraft, the AMX Ghibli. Its namesake is a strong, hot wind that originates in the scorched North African desert. The Mediterranean countries often call it the Sirocco. Well, why don't we see if this southern wind is as hot as they say? The layout and looks of this plane are pretty typical for modern ground attack and combat-capable training aircraft. They're a novelty for War Thunder, though, since the AMX is basically the first ever plane of this class in the game. The machine has a modest size, even smaller than the Swedish Gripen we talked about not so long ago. Despite the fact that they both share a similar compact size, they're meant for completely different missions. The Ghibli's not a fighter, so it doesn't need to burn fuel by the ton and go supersonic. That's why it uses an efficient turbojet engine with no afterburner. Once you start an air battle with the AMX, you'll discover that it's neither the fastest nor the most maneuverable, but instead a very tame and enjoyable machine. It takes a while to get up to speed, but once it's moving fast, it retains the energy well. Just one thing to keep in mind, the wings are pretty fragile. You can easily find yourself de-winged if you try to maneuver at speeds over a thousand kilometers an hour, so you better check where that needle points from time to time. For enemy aircraft, this plane has a few tricks up its wingtips. With two all-aspect air-to-air -air missiles, you can expect two reliable frags in basically any battle. Once the missiles are gone, you can still use the trusty old Vulcan. This aircraft can't boast an ammo pool rivaling American planes, but it's still enough for two or three targets. As for the strike capabilities, this machine is a wonder. The Ghibli can take more than three and a half tons of payload, which is super impressive for this size. Little pigeons can carry great messages. Your main strike choice should probably include infrared guided bombs. We recommend going for four GBU-12s and two GBU-16s. You can use a targeting pod equipped with thermals, so these bombs are handy at any time of the day. And you can also avoid getting into the range of many anti-air systems. And remember, this striker can still carry two missiles on its wingtips for aerial encounters. The AMX Ghibli is a handy, enjoyable, and pretty efficient aircraft. It can truly make it hot on the ground while handling itself well in the air. It was 1940. Great Britain and France just lost to the German offense. War was past the doorstep, so American factories got chock full of orders. The storm that originated in Europe shook the entire world, including Australia, a faraway British dominion in the Southern Oceans. The local officials could very well foresee a Japanese assault, so they got busy with an urgent rearmament of the army. Their own tank development attempts all failed, so the Australians had to ask their mother country for aid. In August of 1940, Colonel Watson, a Royal Artillery officer, set off to Australia. On his way there, he visited the United States to join an Australian mission studying foreign experience. The mission was particularly amazed by the M3 medium tank, and that impression later became the decisive factor for the layout of the Australian tank, with the transmission in the front and the engine in the rear. The designers also modeled the future tank's armor after the M3. It wasn't a carbon copy, of course. The Australian tank avoided the barbettes and sponsons and opted for a classic option with a single turret instead. The time until the spring of 1941 was spent settling on the design specifications. The engineers and the military ultimately agreed on a mass of 25 tons, 60 millimeters of effective thickness for armor, a 350 horsepower engine, and a driving range of 240 kilometers. The tank would use two Vickers machine guns and a two-pounder, a gun that was also used by the Matilda and the Valentine. 
Of course, there's always much more detail in the design requirements. For instance, a strict limit on hull width imposed by the capability of railway transporters. The prospective tank was named the Sentinel. The Army expected more than 500 of these machines for multiple tank divisions, and they wanted them as soon as possible. How about 300 ready for action by August of 1942? Well, the Australians met with some serious trouble on the way there. The casting molds for the hulls took much longer than expected. The first batch had low-strength steel in the armor, and the engines would often overheat. Besides, the capacity of the local industry was no match for the new appetite. Despite all the plans, the first-ever standard Sentinel rolled off the factory floor in July of 42, and it was unreasonable to expect more than a couple dozen tanks a month at first. But no work was done in vain. Even for 1942, the Australians made a pretty good machine. Yes, it was inferior to many German or Soviet machines in a number of ways, but one could still compare it to the most widespread vehicles of the times, like the Panzer IV or the early T-34 tanks. The Sentinel's main flaw was its two-pounder gun, but thankfully the engineers designed it to mount a different cannon too. The strongest Sentinel of the family was the AC-4, armed with a 17-pounder, like the early Centurion or the Sherman Firefly tanks. Mounting this large cannon required using a completely new turret, with a wider turret ring. Despite the success, the military ended up ordering only 65 tanks, instead of the previously discussed hundreds. The rest of the armor pool was filled with the M3 medium tanks and other combat vehicles. And once Australia solved its mass production issues, the home-brewed machines were no longer needed. The Sentinels were discontinued in 1945. Today we're sending our squad mates to a ski resort where they can relax a little and show you some winning strategies on the Frozen Pass map. This time we'll be playing for the Northern team to showcase the tips and tricks. In Scenario 1, both players should spawn on the left and head straight south to the rocks in Square F2. Take opposite positions to cover both exits and improve your field of view. Don't rush down, though. If you use a little patience, you can meet the first wave of enemy tanks. Destroying them would mean preventing a rear attack on your allies in the railway tunnel, so your team would have an easier time conquering point A. Once this task is complete, you can finally drive down and advance towards the center of the map. Split up before you approach point B to give yourself an opportunity to attack from two sides at once. Chances are your opponents will be busy repelling an attack from the main direction, so hitting them in the rear would be an easy affair. Then move along the depression area and use rocks as temporary shelters. One of the players should go and capture the central point, while the other one should take a defensive position near the church to provide cover. In Scenario 2, both players should start with attacking the central part of the map. Pick different spawn points and move along the shortest path to point B. Pay attention to the enemy side of the map on your way there, since you can spot a target along one of the firing lines. One of the players should move to a hill close to the point and provide cover for the other one while they enter the capture area. Once the point is yours, don't rush away. Take defensive positions along line 5 to meet the second wave of attackers. Once you're clear, you'll have some room to maneuver. Your next target is point C. Move in parallel and reach the village in the northeast. One of you should drive along the central street, slowly advancing towards the capture area, while the other one should go around the village on the enemy side to cut off the retreat lines. Once this point too bears the proud colors of your team, you can take defensive positions and use natural shelters or buildings as cover. Tell us in the comments what locations you'd like to see next. Meanwhile, it's time for us to answer some of your questions. The first question was sent by a player called Mate Pavlik. Why can't I see the pilot in the cockpit even when I have the option on? Hi Mate, you might be using low graphics settings. If this is true, the pilot turns invisible to save on resources. Wolf Mick asks, which non-premium F4 is the best out of all nations? Hey Wolf Mick, we actually had a comparison of all the Phantoms before in episode 337. Check it out when you have a chance. Another question comes from the biggest Star Wars fan. Please tell me, do any of the Gripen get a Brazilian Air Force camouflage? Hello there. 
Well, the game can't offer this camo right now, but you can always check out Live War Thunder for good options. It's full of player-made creations, and you can use them for free. Yuho writes, Maybe you could make helicopter turrets controllable by head tracking. Hey Yuho, it's already an option. Helicopter turrets do follow your sight. And the last comment for today was written by Flea Taxi. The best tiger is the premium commander Tiger P, since it's 5.7 with double the armor of the other tiger. Hello! You're right, the Tiger P has some great frontal armor, good enough to protect it against most cannons used at the battle rating of 5.7. Although it still has some vulnerabilities, reducing its overall survivability, we mean the 80mm inclines on the hull and the commander's cupola. That's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment, and the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss our next videos. Don't forget to try and collect Shermans of all nations, leave a like, share your thoughts and comments, and see you next week.